Uh, our next speaker today is going to be Brian Vanderjoot. Uh, Brian has a uh, bachelor's of science in or bachelor's degree in environmental science from UNC Chapel Hill. He's also got a master's degree in geography geography from ECU. He's worked for several different consulting firms, and he is now with AECOM in their Morrisville office. Uh, so I will turn it over to Brian. Thanks, Ray. So um, what I'm going to be talking about today, um, I'm going to be going to be talking about uh, multi-level gas utility integration and uh, specifically as it relates to uh, spatial data and application across uh, multiple platforms. So a little bit about the about the uh, the project we're on. Um, we are working on a large scale gas line inventory and replacement program. Um, this this project has a, uh, multiple phases and uh, a couple of large uh, stakeholders involved. Um, our primary uh, purpose with with this uh, project is to um, is to collect inventory and uh, maintain uh, GIS uh, cast line data and also uh, reference data that is used along along the along the uh, the phases of this project. Um, our client is uh, confidential, so unfortunately I can't show any maps or data or anything of that uh, lines, but a lot of what I will be uh, talking about relates to the process. Um, and how we've done certain things and why. Um, and also to note, uh, ACOM is the is a um, subcontractor on this project. Uh, there is a main contractor and then our client. So the topics that I will be talking about uh, mostly relates to our database design. So how we designed our central database, um, how we incorporated Versioning into it, um, the quality of data that we received, and as well as the workflow we did on this project. I will also be talking about data accessibility and integration, both so uh, our main contractor and client could access it, and how they could access it, um, as well as how we integrated data um, across a couple of different platforms, both receiving data and putting data on those platforms. So our main uh, database design, we uh, we use a uh, our just 10.1 SDE database that is maintained on a server. Um, we have organized it according to feature data sets and uh, feature classes within it, and um, we are using uh, versioning very uh, heavily. <laughs> On this, so um, as an example of, um, we have so we have organized our data uh, versioning along two lines. There is existing data that we collected um, during the start of the project, so data that both the client and our main contractor had on hand for this client as it relates to um, cast line data, and we had a versioning for this at five stages. So we had a version for each uh, feature data set that was assigned by the source of data that we collected. Uh, we have a draft version where uh, once data is imported, where it is staged before uh, QA QC is done. We have a QA QC version where QA QC is done. We have a mapping version where data can be uh, data can be used in uh, mapping products and also web. JS based applications, then we have a final one, which is used for data deliverables to our client and also the uh, main contractor. For uh, new data that we received along the process of this project, uh, new data is organized according to phase. So the project is organized according to a couple of different phases along lines of uh, surveying gas lines, um, designing new gas lines, and also um, installing gas lines. So data that we receive along these stages is 
organize according to phase instead of source at this stage. And then the uh, herzing is done along the same, same way. So um, one of the main points I want to talk about is uh, herzing. Uh, herzing is a way to maintain different, uh, well, uh, versions of data that you can allow different uh, users to view and also to edit to. Um, we maintain such a uh, rigid structure of a uh, versioning to provide uh, data integrity and quality. So only certain users are allowed certain access to certain levels. So this allowed us to uh, have a pretty clear structure for QA and also to uh, maintain data for uh, for client uh, viewing, so they would only be able to view data that was properly QA'd and edited from a couple of different sources that we had that were coming in. The uh, versioning also um, allowed us to have uh, different people <laughs> who were working on this project to edit data at the same time. So um, this presents the issues if you have a different. Uh, if, for example, just a uh, plain file to database, um, people trying to make edits and save to data within these, um, you'll oftentimes only have uh, be able to have one person can do it at a time, and having it this way allowed um, multiple people to be loading data, editing data, and QA QCing data. Um, we set all versions of the public for all people who had access to the database, um, but we only allowed certain people read and write access, which I will expand on coming up. Um, so with, the, with our existing data, one of the issues we've seen a lot um, with a lot of clients is they'll have existing data that they've had for a while, and due to either they've had a turnover with who maintained it, or a schema demands have changed where the data quality is just not very good. Um, one of the issues we ran into with this project is that we, we had data that was set in the wrong uh, coordinate system, so we would have to backtrack and do some testing to find out what coordinate system it was in and then project it in the correct coordinate system. We also had a lot of data that was old and out of date. So we had data s such as the depth of the pipe that was that was installed, the size of pipe, the pipe um, material that was wrong when it was last um, inspected, things like that. We also had data that was put in that was not the as-built data and strictly data that they planned out to put in. So we had pipes show up that were not nowhere near close where they were supposed to be. Um, part of our process was uh, making up a schema and grooming this data and making sure that we could uh, correct it as much as possible for them. So we created a schema that allowed us to provide a couple of uh, different uh, contextual fields. So these would be such thing as uh, pipe size, uh, length, uh, when it was received by us, uh, what the the, uh, the grid location for our client, where it is lo located, um, what source it, it was from, uh, the last person who made uh, changes to it, and the main point of this was to make sure there was proper tracking and QA in place so if anyone else in perhaps the future, if we uh, pass off data to another person, they had enough context to go off of so they could understand what the data was, and we wouldn't have another process of having to go through and collect uh, new data because existing data was so bad. We also made a point to, um, when we made this, this uh, schema, we made a addition of a large amount of fields, but we made sure that any changes to existing fields were cleared with our main uh, contractor and client first. Um, one of the main things we made sure was that some of this uh, old data that existed would, provi would provide a breadcrumb trail if they ever had, if if uh, they either found data that they had not known that they had and were able to piece things together. Um, so maintaining what was there but providing additional context was very important. This is an example of our workflow we use for our system. So you can see we have a couple of different uh, sources down here 
at the bottom. We had two main uh, groupings for people who had access to this database. We have uh, data entry users and database managers. Um, and I have this color code according to who had access to what. So a typical uh, data load, we would have a data entry user who would go in and load data for, let's say, has built. So they would go in and load data. They would check it, make sure it, they were satisfied with it. They would then uh, notify our database manager, who would then uh, reconcile and push up the version, the uh, version to our draft version. It's important to know our database uh, manager was the only one who had access to reconcile uh, versions. We felt this was also going to uh, maintain data integrity in QA. After this push the draft, this means it was uh, ready to be QA'd. At that point, the database manager would push the data to the to the uh, the QA QC version, check it, and uh, make notes of anything they saw that might need to go back and be looked at. If they um, were, satisfied, were satisfied, they would push it to the mapping version, which this version of data was used to uh, publish both for both for uh, products in mapping and also for for our uh, web uh, JS use. So we used uh, SharePoint to maintain some data as well, which uh, our client and our contractor could look at. And then after that, um, data was pushed to our default uh, version, which uh, at this point um, <laughs> metadata was added. And this this was the stage at which data could be uh, uh, packed into uh, file databases and uh, delivered to clients for client needs when they requested it. Um, this was the final step when we went long and uh, made sure that the data was groomed and correct. The uh, metadata was added in at this point. Um, at this point, for a uh, finalization uh, perspective. So uh, we had a couple of different uh, third-party software uh, applications that we both received data from and put data into. One of these that we had both was uh, SharePoint. Uh, there was a subcontractor on this project we had where they would go out with field crews and collect data. And they would uh, do this with tablets. And this data would be exported to a shapefile and put into a Microsoft InfoPath uh, uh, document that was then put on the SharePoint. We would download uh, his document, and we had um, so we had uh, properties in SharePoint that once one, one of uh, the people on our team downloaded this, there was a indicator in SharePoint where they could mark it as they had downloaded it. Uh, one of the things we found was making sure uh, every uh, um, stakeholder was aware of what was going on it's at every phase of the project it was very important and us having this in place also uh, prevented us from having for example two people who are working on this phase of the project from both downloading the data and uploading the same stuff so once once it was uh, downloaded you marked that it was downloaded and you began to work on it which uh, included doing any sort of um, um, schema changes QA uh, doing data projection, uh, reference data, and in some instances, uh, geo addressing. Um, part of the data um, acquisition one of these crews did was collecting point features out in the field. And one of the uh, requirements put forward by our client and contractor was to geo address each of these points to the closest street address. We also had a uh, survey crew who used a th third party web JS um, application that they had tablets that would, uh, they would collect data and it would feed directly to the cloud to upload to this, uh, to this uh, web JS application. So again, we would go into the application and download data, and there was a indicator within 
this application to indicate that we had downloaded this data and we're in the process of QAing it. We downloaded this as a file to the database, did uh, QA projections and uh, schema changes. Part, part, part of the uh, challenges with this was we had uh, issues with this uh, third party software with certain data being uploaded three, four, or five times from survey crews. So um, originally when we started doing this, we know some discrepancies with the amount of pipe data and no say overlap in certain areas where same pipe was uh, was uploaded three, four, or five times. Um, part of this, uh, this was one of the kinks that had to be worked out both of the process from the survey crew and also on the QA on our side. So I mentioned before that we had two points of access through SharePoint, both uh, both uh, downloading data and being data allowed to view through it. Um, we used ArcGIS for SharePoint for our client contractor that were able to view all data that was available th through our mapping version. Um, they all had, if they had access to the SharePoint site, they had access to read access to this data and not write and they could not download it. Um, we maintained those two things as uh, separate to make sure that correct data was sent to them in case there was a uh, request. And then on our end for our uh, SD database, um, we had only GIS uh, specialists and the high level users allowed to access this. So what that meant is we had uh, only a certain amount of users that had access to this, um, as well as making sure they had the correct read and write permissions and assign the right role. So, um, as I said before, only database managers were allowed to re reconcile and push uh, versions. We also had a fail safe in place where only one uh, user was allowed to actually create and delete feature classes to reduce. Uh, user error. Um, this put on a little bit of time when we had to bring in uh, new data and make schema changes, but overall uh, this this was a positive impact on QA, QC. And um, within ACOM we had a internal re request for data from this project. Um, data was uh, exported as, as our default version and it was uh, time stamped. To make sure that, um, to make sure that we provide provided a breadcrumb trail for data. Again, to harp back on this uh, workflow, um, versioning is probably one of the least used ap applications in terms of a uh, database management. We found it's been very helpful with being able to maintain data integrity across all stages, and also preventing additional uh, versions made without getting QA, QC. Um, we've ran into with past projects that if you don't control how people have access, you'll realize certain things got changed and you can't track back to who changed it or why. Um, and that was one of the things we made sure to add for our schema is when uh, we were able to track changes. So um, there was, we have fields in place that were able to keep track of <laughs> the last person to modify it and when. So you were able to, if there was an issue, you were able to backtrack and find out who did what and why. Some some of the upcoming ch challenges that we're gonna have. Um, our client, uh, well, our contractor is using um, Small World. So one of the challenges we're gonna have is being able to integrate our versioning with the, with um, with um, Small World for when, when we pass off his data and then integrating it that way and then with uh, AutoCAD. Um, we're in the beginning stages of doing a pipe, pipe design for this client and part of it is going to be being uh, able to make sure that they have the ability to view this uh, design data whenever they want being able to get it from us. So at that point, uh, questions? Yep. Um, how, how long does it typically take or is there a time frame between going from the field through your different QSQC version and then the mapping and the model version? 
good question. Um, usually, um, when we would get data, oh, sorry. The, uh, the question was of how long the process takes for us to be able to get data and, and then do a QA, QC and push through data. Um, we usually maintained a process of, of maximum a week to get that all pushed through. We had a process in place where at the end of each week, um, the database managers would make sure to check if anything was in uh, the draft version to be ready to be pushed up to QA, QC and checked. So, um, usually it, it took about a week uh, turnaround to make sure that the client and the and the uh, the contractor could see it. How many uh, contractors were used? So there were uh, there's a couple of contractors we have the main contractor who we answered to and there are a couple. Oh, sorry, question was the amount of uh, contractors on this project. So there was the main contractor who we. <laughs> Answered two, and there were uh, two other uh, hub contractors. One who, well, one who was uh, technically the main contractor, but had different crews who were doing uh, surveying, and then one other crew, uh, one other subcontractor who maintained the uh, the uh, the third party JS application. So the uh, question is the amount of crews uh, that were out there during the process. Um, at During height of a couple of these uh, f phases of the project, we had, there were th three out at a max maximum time. So at the end of the day, we had uh, crews would s submit data probably around 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. Um, we'd have a uh, data Entry person would go in and make sure to load this up and check it. So that final version that you provided to the, um, the main contractor, or, uh, main client, um, does that include that history of edits, like the delta tables, or whatever? Like, do they care about knowing when the lines were changed, or do they just want to see what you guys consider the actual type of data? So the question is um, for our final uh, versioning and, and uh, deliverable, if our client cared about having the past versions and having all that. Um, as of right now, we have not gotten any requests to have the past tracking, but one of the great things about this is that if they ask for it, we have it. Anyone else? All right, great. Thank you.